Video games are full of secrets. A lot of them with areas you'll never unlock otherwise. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 secret rooms in recent video games. Starting off at number 10, Mortal Kombat 11, Shang Tsung's Throne Room. Mortal Kombat 11 continues the recent tradition of Mortal Kombat games containing a crypt, an area or just a menu looking at the older games where you can use currency earned in-game to unlock rewards. The old ones were pretty straightforward, you know, with a couple of easter eggs thrown in, but in Mortal Kombat 10 and especially 11, they've made things way more complex, with hidden passages, secret items, and keys hidden everywhere. Definitely the most mysterious was the entrance, where if you check the map, it sure seemed like there was an area you could explore, but it didn't seem to have any way to actually get there. Well, there was a way to get there, it's just really, really hard. A huge, massive pain and it honestly doesn't make any sense as you're trying to do it. The only way to unlock that last area of the crypt is to stick 10 severed heads on spikes in this area of the crypt. Doesn't sound too bad, but the only way to get a severed head is by performing 50 fatalities on that specific character while playing the game. And no, not fatalities as that character, 50 fatalities to that character. And that gets you one head and you need 10 heads to unlock the door. For most players, this meant tediously replaying fights over and over to collect heads because seriously, who's doing that many fatalities when they play this game? So you get your 10 heads on 10 spikes and then you'll unlock Shang Tsung's throne room. It basically just gets you some nice character specific chests to open, but oh hey, more locked doors too. So if you want to fully explore the entire game, you're gonna need more heads. 10 more heads unlocks one door, and another 10 unlocks the final door. And as far as secret rooms go, this one probably actually gives you some of the best rewards on this list, but it is also for sure the most tedious to actually access. Have a nice day. At number nine is Red Dead Redemption 2's Mutant Room. Even more than in GTA 5, Red Dead Redemption 2 is just packed full of interesting secrets like rogue robots, vampires, and even UFOs. But if we're talking secret rooms, I have to mention this creepy place west of the Van Horn Trading Post. It might not seem like anything special from the outside, just a dilapidated house you can't go in, but if you find a way to climb up into the awning, there's an open window you can get through, and inside you will find some pretty freaky experiments and animal corpse hybrids. There's creepy taxidermy creatures all over the place, along with strange notes and diagrams. The centerpiece of the whole area is the man bear pig on the rack. Like some crazy man was trying to create life or something. Not that it really matters, but it's just a really creepy location in the game. And it's a game that's full of creepy locations, and this one takes the cake. It's definitely the most secret roomy of the Red Dead secrets, though. And definitely the most grotesque. And at number eight, Bloodborne has an abandoned old workshop that's pretty interesting. Bloodborne's a game where even the story is basically a secret, so of course it's gonna have a few hidden nooks and crannies around its massive world that might offer a hint or two as to what's going on. Or it might leave you even more confused, like this small hidden location in the Cathedral Ward called the Abandoned Workshop. Getting to it can be a little tricky as you're gonna need to make a few awkward falls and even more awkward jumps, but once you know the way, it's nothing too difficult to access. But this area is very important being that, well, it looks exactly like a hunter's dream. The one safe place you return to to level up and rest between the wandering nightmarish streets of Yarnum. It's implied that this is the real location of the hunter's dream or the location the hunter's dream is based on. And you can find clues to German, the first hunter, and the doll who levels up your character in the dream. It's all very bizarre and kind of salacious if you read into it. I mean, what's this German guy doing dressing up like a full-size doll anyway? Outside of getting some doll clothes and some creepy lore, you can also find one third of umbilical cord, which you know is required to get the secret ending. What you do with it, by the way, eat it, duh. Yep, just chow down on that black umbilical cord and you'll get the eyes on the inside. Sounds great, right? Bloodborne is just as famous for its horrifying story as its intense combat, and this really, this, this area demonstrates that really well. At number seven is the Doom 2016 reboot's birthday party room. Doom embraced the nature of classic Doom, which was kind of stupid, but it's a stupid we all love and the game was better for it. And this secret room follows suit. It's dumb, it's pointless, but it's funny. Yay! 
To find this thing, you look for the yellow jump pad in the level Titan's Realm. There's a pretty narrow looking hole through the wall that you can actually jump into to find a skeleton with a cake and balloon. It's good to know that even if you're a skeleton in hell, someone remembered your birthday. And as just a little bonus to this Doom point, I want to talk about the classic levels that they put in Doom 2016. There's 13 total, but you can find them by pulling a secret lever somewhere in a map, which will open a door somewhere that leads to a classic Doom level. The maps and textures are exactly the same, but you're running around with modern weapons and enemies. It doesn't exactly fit the definition of secret room when there's 13 of them and there's many rooms rather than just one. It's still a cool Easter egg, is it not? And number six, the Fallout 76 developer room. Here's a secret room no one was supposed to see, let alone get into the developer room for Fallout 76. Made specifically for testing and QA purposes, this room contains every item in the game that includes weapons, recipes, armor, just a lot of stuff you would need to test the game. These kind of developer rooms were also hidden in previous Bethesda games like Fallout 4 and Skyrim, but what makes the Fallout 76 one so interesting is how it breaks the game. Previous Bethesda RPGs were single player, so really there's not a lot of issue with players warping into the developer room and grabbing some goodies, but Fallout 76 is an online only multiplayer game with some PvP elements. The game is supposed to have some semblance of balance, even though that's never really been the case. I mean, it's also not a good game. But the developers want you to be short on resources, so the game can continue to be challenging and keep everybody who is involved with it on a certain level, so the developer room is much more difficult to get access to. You can't just put in console commands and warp there. Still, some players found a way to get in because, of course, and outside of all the high-powered loot they were able to grab, they were able to grab this as well, the single human NPC in Fallout 76 named Wooby. Of course, NPCs eventually will be added to the game sometime in the future, but for now, this is all we got. A guy named Wooby hidden away in the deepest, darkest, most hidden part of Fallout 76. As far as secret rooms go, one where you'll get banned if you try to get in is pretty damn secret. And number five is Dying Light's World 1-1. Here's a bizarre one. In Dying Light, there's a little green pipe sticking out of a chimney on the roof of a building in Old Town. If you interact with it, you'll be sent to a recreation of World 1-1 from Super Mario Brothers. It's got everything. Blocks, pits, Goombas, and even a secret block containing a secret blueprint. You finish the section the same way you would do it in Super Mario Brothers. Just slide down the flagpole and you're done. The whole thing is bizarre and hilarious, but bonus points for adding a secret, that blueprint, into your secret. Moving on to number four is a secret treasure room in Hitman 2, a mission deep in the jungles of Columbia. Of course, there's gonna be some kind of secret temple and secret hidden treasure somewhere. Actually, unlocking this room is a somewhat confusing ordeal as you need to get a gold idol from the shop in the village, but breaking into the shop makes the idol disappear, so the only way to get it is to knock out the shopkeeper and use his key to get in. Once you have it, there's still one more step required. You have to get a shaman costume, which makes sense, right? So you wear the shaman costume, you head into the altar cavern, and there's a section of wall that you can put the gold idol, and it opens a secret passage. At this point, you're gonna need to cross an Indiana Jones style trap room, like step on the wrong pressure plate and it's over, but if you manage to cross, you'll be rewarded with the burial knife, which doesn't do anything special, but it is a unique knife. And if those dart shooters made you a little nervous on the way in, don't worry, they just shoot confetti on your way out. Just another day for Agent 47, I guess. Oh. At number three, Just Cause 4's Interior Moon. Here's another game that's just packed with Easter eggs, although this secret room probably isn't the most bizarre of them. It was one of the last ones people actually found, though. Hidden behind a small discolored patch of rock on the gigantic central mountains, you'll find a strange corridor leading to a glass-enclosed science base of some kind. This on its own is a little weird, but break the glass and you will find the moon and what looks like an infinite star field. You can even get onto the moon if you want and find a little soulless flag planted on there. Soulless being the country Rico is blowing up in the game. I don't know why this is here or what it means. And yeah, even though this is really bizarre, this is a game where you can play Bennett Foddy's Getting Over It and get stuck in a Take On Me music video. So it's just basically crazy all around. Number two in Bloodstained, a Castlevania NES throwback. 
Obviously, this game is based on Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and if you played that game, you know how secret-ridden it is. People kind of expected Bloodstained, for that reason, to have a lot of pretty wild secrets, and this secret room is one of the best. You break a ceiling in the Hall of Termination to find a secret room, nothing too surprising in there, but if you move left and break another wall, you'll find a second secret room with something a little more interesting. A bookshelf that will transport you to the 8-bit Nightmare, a short stage based off the original Castlevania with just the serial numbers filed off, like, oh, this definitely isn't Castlevania, is it? There's unique enemies that will give you special 8-bit moves and even a boss at the end. I absolutely love seeing 8-bit throwbacks in modern games, and this one is definitely one of the best. You'll pay for this transgression. Death is too kind for you. And finally, in Undertale, Sans Locked Room, another game absolutely packed with secrets. Just wouldn't be right to talk about secret rooms in recent games without bringing up at least one of the Undertale secrets. My personal favorite one is, of course, Sans Workshop, which you can only get access to by playing through the neutral role of the game, meaning a fresh save where you don't kill any enemies at all. I mean, you can play a neutral role and kill enemies, but you cannot kill enemies to get into this room. When you get to where Sans confronts you at the end of the game, you listen to what he has to say, then quit and reload. Instead of saying the same thing as last time, he'll give you a key to his room. Quit and reload again, and you'll find a silver key in his room, which unlocks another secret room, Sans Workshop, which hints at some pretty weird backstory about the dude. If you thought Sans Undertale was just a meme, well, he's not. He's also a time traveler, maybe. I don't know, it's it's a super weird thing, but it's a pretty funny secret, actually. That's all for today. What are some of your favorite secret rooms in video games? Leave us a comment, let us know. If you like this video, please click like, and if you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. That means click subscribe, and don't forget to enable all notifications. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter, Falcon Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.